Like, I don't know if this is real. This is bad, man. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones, the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Hassan Minaj. You know him from The Daily Show, and then he's making his theatrical debut with Homecoming King this fall. Hassan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. How are you with hot food? As an Indian, I'm pretty good. Do you feel pressure? Like, yeah. the pressure of your people like on your shoulders and you really need to come correct? Like, when I watch it, I'm a fan of the show, I'm a fan of everybody you interview, but also, like, the Indian in me is like, 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 sriracha? Like, really? Like, oh, tapatio? Like, really? Like, when I saw Khaled drop out after three, I was like, come on. Oh. Yeah. That's a story unto itself. Are you ready to get it, it started? Yeah, yeah, let's get into it. All right, so sriracha is no big deal. This is, these are layup lines, you know what I mean? Right-handed layups. Let's do a left-handed layup. All right, so you and I have both worked with DJ Khaled. As you just said, he did oh this show. Oh my God. You did the sneaker closet parody on uh, Comedy Central. I basically parodied what you guys essentially did. Exactly, yeah. and it was awesome, and you dove into Khaled's world. As a matter of fact, congratulations. You didn't play yourself. Thank you. But it was funny because Khaled has kind of almost become A-list at this point. Yeah. But back when he was with us, he wasn't quite at that like Ellen DeGeneres level. No, no, no. I saw him and I was like, this is a Malcolm Gladwell tipping point situation. Right. He has gotten his 10,000 hours of cloth talk in. Yes. And it's about to like really blow up in a major way. And then, you know what too, it's been funny yeah. to see his evolution as a celebrity. Yeah. He's on Ellen DeGeneres and they're like, who are they? And when he was on my <laughs> right, show, right, 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 yeah. I asked him that question six months before anybody asked him that question. Yeah. I asked him that and he's like, they are the fuck boys. The fuck boys. The fuck boys. That's one of the best, <laughs> that's one of the best sound bites ever. I mean, it's just you know, a better word for hater. Mad people, bums, losers, garbage. Like a piece of shit. How did he greet you when you got to his place? What's up, man? This is gonna be the biggest interview of your whole career. And dare I say, it's up there. It might have been. It might. It might be. Khaled, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Yep. Barack Obama. And you met in that order. It was like an Air Jordan Three. White <laughs> cement. Classic. Classic. You're wearing those right now. Right now, man. Come on, man. Come on, now. Shout out, to Vi now. Shout out to Viacom. These correspondence dinner events always seem oh, like the oh, definition of a oh, tough crowd oh. because you have these curmudgeon reporters, you have these robotic politicians, yes. you have people that are trying to awkwardly laugh at brown people jokes and it's always weird right, and uncomfortable. Right, 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 right. What's crazy is, is that event, the congressional correspondence dinner, was three days after Orlando. So what was happening in the zeitgeist was like, gun control, terrorism, all of this stuff was in the zeitgeist. And specifically in regards to Congress, there was like massive congressional inaction. It's interesting that you say this because when you watch your speech yeah. at about the 18 minute mark, you can see that it's all jokes up until the 18 minute mark. Yeah. And then you can see that clearly, philosophically, you made a decision yeah. to go from comedy to something with more weight. And I wondered why. I'm the only one of Adam, all my like, I consider like comedians, like we're like this tribe, out of the whole tribe that got this chance to say it to their face. One shot, mom spaghetti, eight mile, like say it. Right. And I would be remiss if I didn't take that shot. Ultimately what I wanted to let them know was like, hey, look, we turned to you guys. You guys are like, you guys are our thought leaders. You guys are our leaders in society. We don't pay you to write tweets and send us your hashtags and thoughts and prayers. We pay you guys and turn to you guys and vote for you guys to pass legislation. So do that. This looks a lot redder than the other ones, but it's not that tough a sauce. Plus, you did come in here talking a big game, Hassan. I was talking a lot of shit. You were. You met Michael Jordan? What was that like? Because everybody has Michael Jordan horror stories and they're my favorite genre of story. I love them, I can't get enough of them. I met Michael Jordan, but I didn't meet him. I tried to meet him. And then I got body slammed by his bodyguard. <laughs> That's what seems to happen. I didn't fully understand context. There's this brown kid running from across the casino floor, yelling, Michael, happy birthday. But I was just coming in for a high five. And then this dude just straight up DDT'd me, boom, <laughs> into the floor in Vegas Casino. 
and like literally like time and stopped. Like everybody was just like, boom, whoa. the whole place went silent. Yeah, the whole place went silent. Like old Filipino ladies stopped playing blackjack and were like, whoa, the dude from Held and Kumar got body slammed. This is getting hot. It's getting hot. We're only at number three, Hassan. This is a problem. Let me ask you a question. Sure. You think Donald Trump will destroy the world? If given the nuclear codes? So here's my thing with Donald Trump. Right. I used to be a Celebrity Apprentice fan. Like I watched Donald Trump Word. all the time. I was like a Donald Trump fan because I thought he was this sort of interesting pop culture figure. He was so entertaining on that show because this is a show about him, but he only appears for the first three minutes and he like sets up the thing and then his dipshit kids kind of carry it through. Right. And then he meets him at the finish line at the boardroom. Right. So I always thought it was interesting that this guy who has his own show has even outsourced his own hosting duties. Wow, you know, yeah, it yeah. It seems like kind of. Yeah, yeah what's going on with his presidential run where it's like say what you will about Donald Trump but he clearly just doesn't want the job like even if you're voting for him even if you're a fan of him like yeah. he's clearly telling everybody that he doesn't want the job doubling and tripling down on all these niche things but it's just like Celebrity Apprentice he didn't even want that job he just wanted the vanity project so I have this theory what if we were all to just tell him Donald you're president yeah, and like he's not actually else. president, but we do a Truman Show thing mm -hmm. where we sort of all act like we're a part of this play. This is to save civilization, that we all act so when we see him, we're like, Mr. President. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm president. But he's not actually president. We build him a fake White House. Like he thinks that this whole thing is real. I think he would even like that. If I you think could he just would. keep it yeah, a yeah, secret, yeah, yeah, yeah. he'd be like, yeah, where do I sign? Yeah. Dude, where's boots. Joe LaPuma? I, I need me and Joe LaPuma to stand next to each other because oh. I'm Joe LaPuma in brown face and he's me in white face. Like we're just in very, <laughs> there's various shades of melanin between me and Joe LaPuma. People on Twitter are like, yo, are you Joe LaPuma? And I'm like, hey man, I can try. <laughs> Give me uh, some. No, no, no. You no honestly, give me, give me some of that zombie apocalypse chic, and I am Joe Lapuma. From the outside looking in, going to these political conventions always seems like such a circus. It always seems so crazy. Yeah. But I did like the story that you did for the Daily Show because it outlines an interesting point. RNC. Like sometimes at the yeah. RNC, yeah. you get face to face with people who you think you'll have nothing in common with. Yes. And then you start to have these conversations, and you realize that hey, maybe we're not as far apart as it looks on the news, or maybe we're not as far apart as it would seem once we actually start talking. Did you have that yes. experience? People came out with the hats and the cape, capes and like the all lives matter signs. Mm -hmm. And it was terrifying, right? To see like 15,000 people screaming yes, lock her up, yeah, all that on the stuff. Outside, it looks crazy. It looked crazy. We approached some of them that literally were like all lives matter. And then we presented the platforms for Black Lives Matter, police accountability, body cameras, all that and stuff. And they're probably just not along every point. And they were like, they were like cool, sounds Great. reasonable to me. Yeah. yeah, they're like, oh, police officers from those respective communities should watch over those communities. And yeah, sure. Like, they said yes to all of the policy platforms. It's like, oh, you didn't like the shoebox that it came in? Like, that That's the, the thing, I think it's That's the it? marketing and advertising for these campaigns and for these people. People just fall for those but things and then yeah. go against their self-interest all the time. I guess, yeah. It's fucking crazy. So it's kind of tasty, but it has a cut. Oh, these sauces are great. But you know, my mom and my mom and dad would love it. For this next part, some people might call it a crutch on hot ones. Maybe we're being lazy. Maybe we're phoning it in. But it always is a great segment. We just pull some pictures from your Instagram, some oldies and goodies, and we just need more context. And it's starting to hit us on. Laptop, please. Give, give me a second. <laughs> See, here's the thing: it's like these. Some of these come in with like this left hook. Uh-huh. You don't see it coming. And that's one of them. Here's how I know that I think you're part of the Illuminati. You you just you just had milk. Have you not had milk? I could have I could have pushed much more. Compare my milk to his milk. It's just doing this show weekly. I'm not I'm no superhero. What's your reg like during the week? I mean, don't tell me you're eating this every day. Me? Yeah. Every week. Oh, oh. You got to the NBA finals oh, and that's this man. close to Steph Curry, and that's one hell of an Instagram picture. Man, this was a crazy situation. I don't think I'll ever get this to ever happen again in my life. What happened? Game seven, courtside. Unbelievable. How'd you Unbelievable. get those tickets? A buddy of mine knows Dan Gilbert. And he's like, do you want to be my guest? I was like, yeah, I'll be your guest. Sign me up, Beauty and the Beast. I will be your guest. <laughs> Went courtside. It was nuts. And like I'm, a, like, I'm a true like Hoops fan. So to go there, I saw the block. I saw the LeBron block baseline. I saw Luke Walton's parents literally like just their hearts just crumble. I saw it 
in real time. That was that level. was LeBron's Muhammad Ali's rumble in the jungle. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I'm gonna it's go into the a... belly of the beast, just get pounded, rope a dope at the end. I'm the greatest. Like, and we're all like, yeah, you you pretty much are. One more. Was this a weird time? Because it was like in like the oh! 2014 era. Oh man. And you were like, you had this Cosby interview like right before that whole avalanche began. If you think back on this time, what do you think about? Dude, was it trippy for you? Was it had so to have been so weird. It's so crazy because in the documentary Stand Up Planet, which is which has now been like removed, they don't air it anymore because of that. In the documentary, he was like, you know what's you know what's most important about stand-up comedy? Stand-up comedy is about likability. And I don't like you. And that is the best compliment to get from a serial rapist. Hey man, you kinda, you bother me a That's little bit. That's the best thing that could have ever happened. That day, I was like, I should quit comedy. But now, it's amazing how life works, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, it all made sense, sure. You're an interesting guy in that, you know, you do the political correspondence stuff, you do sketch comedy stuff, yeah. you have one man show stuff. So I imagine that there are a lot of people that you've had in your life who maybe you, you've considered mentors who probably all have a different opinion about who you should be and what kind of performer you should be. Best advice I ever received was probably from Jon Stewart. And uh, John was like, move towards your discomfort. Which is maybe a metaphor as to why I'm here. No, but, no, but I really could agree with that as a- In terms of subject matter. like. If there's something that's making you uncomfortable, explore that, like dig into that. Now I'm getting like the, starting to burn in other places, like my lips are burning. My gums are burning. Well, that's not right. No. The mistake I've made sometimes is like with Indian food, sometimes you eat with your hands, then you'll rub your eyes. Don't play yourself like that. <laughs> <laughs> Pour a little bit of yours into mine, please. Go ahead. Thank you. What do you remember about Mike Tyson's stand-up? When you shared the bill with him, was he making people laugh? Oh, was he funny man. on stage? Dude, it was tragic. You know when they say comedy and tragedy are the two sides of the same coin? It was really tragic. Because he was saying things that wasn't making anybody laugh. I'm not getting emotional because of the Mike Tyson stuff. It's the wing. It's the wing. You got it, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is so... <laughs> you know when Donald Trump was like, I want to bring back worse than waterboarding? This is what he was talking you about. Just come on our show? Yeah. He'll be like, we, we should bring this to Gitmo. <laughs> Here we go. Push and believe. He was like, do you know what it's like to need money and have to perform at people's birthday parties? <clears throat> because you have to pay rent. <sighs> I was like, man, that is, that's like, that's awful. And he's like, <laughs> Like I'll be at <laughs> I'll be at kids' birthday parties, like these sixteen-year-old white kids, <laughs> and they'll <laughs> and they'll be I'll be like, can I take a picture with you? And he's like, I want to knock them out, but I can't. And it's so humiliating for me as a man. <laughs> so that was his material at the. That was his material, and I was like at the laugh factory. He's at the laugh factory at the fucking chuckle hut. And he's just like, isn't that crazy? And people are just sitting there in silence. And I'm like, this is a true Greek tragedy. <sighs> I'm like thinking about my mother. Like I'm trying to like think positive thoughts, you know? Your mom would be proud that you made it this far. She Not everyone does, including DJ Khaled. He doesn't know what this world is like. We're up in the clouds. Mad Dog 357. Used to be our hottest sauce. Now it's our second hottest sauce. Hassan. You holding up? Can you make it through? You I'm are starting to get like this. Get your like, legs. I kind of want to like, like I want to like play pickup or something. I want to hit the stage. I want to drop like ten minutes because like I'm feeling hyped. That's the thing about hot sauce. You know you know, they say that you end up kind of getting sort of a psychedelic high off of it. So I think you're really feeling that. Yeah. Like I popped a molly. I'm sweating. Yeah. All right. So one of your early jobs was, was with this tech startup, Ning, right? And 
I'm not sure a lot of people know this, but it's this sort of blogging platform. Oh my god! And 50 Cent was one of the first. <laughs> this, major is power users. this is 50.com. This is 50.com. Oh, shout out to Ning. Did he ever stop by the office, or what do you remember? He about never working? did, but I used to have to work really late at night. I'm just talking loud that way. I don't have to like think about like sweating or like think about eating. I asked to work. I used to have to work really late at night. And I had this sort of like esoteric like life, not esoteric, like this like come to Jesus realization moment where I was like in a green room at a comedy club doing a set before I was about to go on stage. And I had my computer, in, my laptop in the green room. And I'm like, this has got to stop. I'm an Indian guy doing tech support right now. This is wrong. I do my set. I still have to work. It's late at night. And um, I was basically doing like support on like something that was happening wrong with like his network. And I accidentally shut the network off. Like I shut down This Is 50? I shut down This Is 50, dude. And like at like three o'clock in the morning, like I fall asleep. I get a call from like my manager being like, what's going on? And a bunch of people were like, yo, do not fess up to this. Like don't take the, don't take the fall for this. They won't know that you shut it down. I fessed up to the deed. You made an enemy out of 50 Cent. 50 Cent made an enemy out of you. Dude, I pulled uh, the night of, like Nasir, I took the deal. I said I did the crime, and I shouldn't have. Dude, I'm having an out-of-body experience right now. That's what we love. Like, I don't know if this is real. This is bad, man. So, you ready to do the last one? And you're a fan, so you know what's up. It's Blair's Mega Death Sauce with Liquid Rage. Oh, I like to put a dab God. on it. You don't have to what if you don't I want doing? to. But you have come this far, son. You have come this far. It's up to you. You don't have to. You don't have to if you don't want to. Is this, just compare this to what we had so far. Well, this, by the numbers, is the worst one. But, and this might make you feel a little bit better, maybe a little bit worse, I think that this is the hardest sauce to endure. I think that this one is the one that punches you in the face the hardest. This one, by the numbers, the hottest. But, if you can handle this, you can handle this. That's what I think. All right. Please tell me this is all for something. Like, are we doing this for charity? Is there some greater meeting? No, madness? this is all or is hollow. this just for nothing? This is, I think, just to satisfy dab, some sort of creative dab. vision. Dab, 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 dab. dab. <laughs> so, through doing this show, I know how picky fans can be. If there's Woo! even the perception that we've changed something about this show, fans go nuts. I imagine that The Daily Show was like that on steroids when the torch got passed from John to Trevor. What's been the biggest challenge from the inside? Do you ever feel the pressure of having to be twice as good as you were for people to think that you're performing at the same level? You know what it is, man? Tell me. Really, what we do on the show, it's like political chopped. We take the ingredients of what we're given that day, we gotta make sand castles out of it. Mm -hmm. And that's all we're trying to do. Respect the process. Kobe Bryant, Muse, we're just picking up marbles every day with our toes. Building a sand castle, it's like fine. Get a little bit of Carly Fiorina. We got some Trump mega vetting that we're doing on the show today. We build a sand castle, the water washes it away. We do it again. We do that like 200 plus times a year. That's what we're supposed to do. The sun, you made it through. Thank All you. the way through, cleared it. I honestly don't know what I'm even saying. Are you proud of yourself? Like you could ask me my social security number on camera. What's your I'll song? probably give it to you. Five four, <laughs> I'm not gonna give it to you. All right, man, the floor is yours. 30 seconds, this camera, that camera. You like to work this camera sometimes, I've noticed. Pick them, anyone that you want. Let the world know what you have going on in your life. Right now I'm on my one man show. It's called Homecoming King. We're going to 30 plus cities around the country. We talk about my life. We talk about first generation brown experience and what new brown America means to me. 
It's a great show. It's like a brown John Hughes movie. We talk about love, racism, forgiveness. 70 minutes, beautiful theater, visuals. Go to homecomingshow.com to get your tickets. Check us out in a city near you. Dude, pray for me. <laughs> <laughs>